Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. We spend a lot of time talking about color mutations in the show, and a viewer of ours sent me an email asking why don't we spend some time looking at some naturally occurring color phases. So we're gonna show you some animals just like you'd see them in the wild. You're watching Snake Bites. With all the cool color mutations out there, sometimes we lose track of how cool some of the naturally occurring colors are of these animals. Take for example this Centralian carpet python, truly an incredible animal. So let's take a look at some other sweet naturally occurring animals. Sticking with carpet pythons, the Queensland carpet python is another really cool animal. One of my favorite carpet pythons has to be the jungle carpet python. There's nothing like that black and yellow contrast, really an amazing looking animal. Sticking with Australian pythons, because you guys know I love the Aussie pythons, these Woma pythons are incredible animals. Look at the banding on them, and I just love the pattern over the eyes. A lot of people would say that the Brazilian rainbow boa might be the prettiest of the naturally occurring boids. And I have to tell you, with the iridescence and the cryptic pattern, they might be right. This is another species of rainbow boa, and although it doesn't have the red that the Brazilian rainbow boa has, it certainly has the same cryptic patterning and is a really cool snake. You won't see these guys around too much, they're actually called Argentine rainbow boas. You guys know I love ball pythons and I talk about mutations all the time because that's a big part of what we do here. But the truth is, a normal ball python is what got me into reptiles when I went to a zoo when I was about three years old. So here it is, just your typical ball python. There's a lot of really cool garter snakes out there, but one of my favorites happened to be a checkered garter snake. It's not too hard to figure out where they got their name with all these checkerboards going down their back. I talk about color phases an awful lot in hog nose, and you guys know I'm into that stuff, but the truth is the naturally occurring color is pretty incredible herself, not to mention that pug nose is adorable. With all the cool hognose snakes that we breed to get all those cool color phases, there's actually one that occurs in the wild that is just as cool, and that's the tricolored hognose snakes. Red, yellow, and black in the wild. Beat that one. Sometimes nature can be truly amazing. Take, for instance, the milk snakes. These are all naturally occurring color phases like this apricot Puebloan milk snake. This is something that you could actually find under a rock down in Mexico. This is a desert phase or a black and white cow king. And again, whenever you have stark contrast like these black and white banded animals, you can't beat that. I remember when I was about 15 years old getting a book that was called Living Snakes of the World and I stared at the Angolan pythons day after day. I couldn't wait to have them. These Angolan pythons are truly incredible. They come from West Africa near the ball python range and they have a lot of similarities to ball pythons. But as you can see they get much larger and actually have a pretty interesting color and pattern to them. This is a Mexican black king snake, and as you can see, it's just a jet black animal. Super cool animals. And again, these guys will max out at about five foot and are really impressive. One of the animals when people come to see my collection always love it. And as you can see, this guy's a little hyper. They bite a little bit only because they're hungry, not because they're mean. Hey, what's up, Brian? You need to talk to me? Yeah, Malik, come on in. Um, Look, there's no real easy way for me to say this, but I have to let you go. What? You're gonna let me go to Anaheim with you? No. Sweet! No, no, no. What I'm saying is I have to fire you. But I do a great job here. It has nothing to do with your job performance, but, well, it's come to my attention you don't have a mutation. Mutation? You don't have mutant powers. Well, no s***, Brian. Look, Mally, someone must have not asked you in your interview about mutant powers. Mutations are kind of our thing. You don't have one, so you have to go. Uh, is this some kind of pick on the new guy thing? You're screwing with me, right? No, no, no I'm not, not Mally. Mally. Holy s***. <laughs> How'd you do that? It's my mutation. We all have one. Well, except for you. Scar has super strength. Kearney can teleport himself. George? Well, Dorothy, I'm not sure what that's all about, but it's certainly a mutation. Chewy has an extra set of arms to work faster. And Kel can control snakes with his mind. So you have to understand why I have to let you go. It, 
If our enemies knew you didn't have a mutation, you would just be a liability to us. You can't fire me because I'm normal. That's illegal. I'll sue you. You can try, but I can I do can a, do lot, a lot, lot more than this. this. But I could get a mutation. Would that be okay? I just have to get bit by a radioactive snake or something, right? I appreciate the effort, Mally, but that's just not how it works. It's not safe for you here. But I really like this job. Can we compromise? I could learn to be awesome at karate or learn to throw a shield or something. I just want to help. Look, Mally, you're a good kid. Here's what we're going to do. Get yourself a utility belt and we'll keep you on as a temporary basis. Does that sound fair to you? Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks, Brian. You won't regret it. I hope I don't. And maybe you'll get mutant powers when you hit puberty. I'm 22. These San Luis Potosi or Max Max King snakes are pretty cool because they're one of the few snakes that actually have gray, red, and black. You have gray bands and a couple other animals, but it's a really cool color combination. And again, you find them just like this in the wild. These variable kings or theri kings are actually really cool animals and as you can see this one has a lot of orange in it. They are selectively bred for that particular trait but they are not a color mutation so you will find this type of stuff in the wild. This is another milk snake. It's actually called a Nelson's milk snake and again they're very beautiful with that extreme red but really what you want is as much red as possible when you're going to breed them into albino. So even though we're talking about naturally occurring mutations, this makes an incredible albino because of the quantity of red. In my opinion, one of the coolest naturally occurring animals that I've ever seen are some of the Asian rat snakes, like this Mandarin rat snake. The amount of yellow and black is just incredible in this animal. Again, it's one of those things that you can't believe nature would actually make an animal like this. This is a Honduran milk snake, not much different than the other milk snakes I've already shown you. The difference is that these are one of the largest milk snakes. These guys can get up to seven foot long. That's what makes them so impressive. With all the hundreds of different color mutations in corn snakes, there's a lot to talk about. But the truth is, it all comes back down to a normal corn snake. And they're a beautiful animal in their own right. And again, I think they're one of the best pet snakes, especially for someone just starting out. This is a Brooks King or a South Florida King. There's actually two different species down in Florida, the Peninsula and the South Florida. The South Florida type get a little bit larger and have all this really rich yellow color to them. These guys can max out at over eight foot. I've shown these guys in the show and they're one of my favorite new snakes I've been working with over the last year. These are actually rhino rat snakes and as they get bigger they actually get more green. When they hatch out they're kind of a tan brownish color and every time they shed they get more and more green. You can see the emerald color starting to come out in this animal. This is another animal that you don't see too often. These are actually cave dwelling rats or Ridleyi. And again, the thing that's really cool about them is they almost look like there's two different snakes. The front end and the back end are completely different colors. I couldn't do a show on naturally occurring colors without mentioning green tree pythons. These guys are one of the most incredible animals with their greens, yellows, and even blues. And as you can see, they're not all aggressive. This is a really nice tame animal, although I don't know that handling green tree pythons is always a great idea. Amazon tree boas are one of the most naturally occurring polymorphic animals. Believe it or not, these are all the same animal and can really come out of the same litter and they have live young. The variety really blows my mind. I couldn't do a show on regular snakes without highlighting a big Burmese pythons. They're an incredible looking snake, but the truth is, is just the size of them are so impressive. I've been keeping them since I was a kid, and as long as you keep them properly, they're really an incredible animal. On the comment of the week on the dog versus snake episode, the question was, if you could have any animal, what would it be? And Monty Snake said, what animal I can keep? Snakes, of course. No mess, water them every two to three days, feed them every week for two weeks, no noise, and they are way more beautiful than dogs. Snakes all the way. Snakes, snakes, and more snakes. Ha! Well, you know I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm all about the snakes. Although you guys know that my favorite animal happens to be a giraffe, but we won't even go there. You guys make sure you keep sending me creative comments, and I'm going to feature you on a future episode. Alright guys, Cal's question of the week. Now you've seen the mutant powers we have. I want to know if you could choose any power in the world, what would it be? Text your video comment below. Make them interesting. You know, going invisible, I mean, walking through walls. Give me something interesting. Give me something new.
So there it is, some of the naturally occurring animals that we work with. Of course, there's a lot more that we weren't able to show you, but if you're getting into animals and you don't want to spend a ton of money on morphs, consider a natural animal. They're usually a lot less expensive. And something that us here at Snake Bites are really excited about is the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo in Toronto. It's the third week in September. If you guys are going to be there, make sure to look us up. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.